Whenever I film videos with my sugar gliders, I always have people commenting and telling me how much they love the gliders and wish they had their own. Now, while I love being a glider mom and I wouldn't trade my sugar gliders for anything, I do realize that they're pretty far from the ideal pet for most people. So today, I want to talk about five alternatives to sugar gliders that you should probably get instead. I've never seen anyone do anything like this before, so it's important to be mindful of the fact that these are alternatives to sugar gliders, not necessarily substitutes. These are all completely different species with their own care requirements and their own unique quirks. So make sure you research each of these species in depth and respect them for their differences that they have. But I do think there's a lot of similarities between them and gliders, so let's get started. And I do want to add, this is not my sugar gliders full-time enclosure. I'm actually traveling with them right now. So this is kind of like their vacation cage. But if you do want to see what they're in most of the time, make sure you watch my cage tour and my pet room tour. So let's get started. The first and most similar alternative to sugar gliders is actually rats. Like sugar gliders, rats are highly social and highly intelligent. They're very playful and they bond very closely with their owners, which is I think a lot of the same things that attract people to sugar gliders. Being highly social, just like sugar gliders, they do have to be in pairs or more, and they have very similar housing requirements, with both of them needing the same amount of space, preferably in a large vertically barred cage. A couple places where rats beat out sugar gliders is actually in their accessibility. It's pretty hard to find sugar gliders if they're not available in your area. However, I guarantee that you're going to be able to find a pet rat somewhere, whether that be a feeder rat or it's actually from a reputable breeder. Along with accessibility comes affordability, where sugar gliders in my area are 300 to thousands of dollars. Rats, you can find them for 50 to 100 from reputable breeders and even cheaper if you want to look at rehoming sites or pet stores. Rats also just seem a lot hardier than sugar gliders in that you can have a lot more things in their cage. For example, things like dog ropes, jute, and twine is a complete no-no for sugar gliders but can work really well for rats. Also, you have to be a lot less picky with fleeces for rats because sugar gliders are very sensitive and if there's any loose threads, they'll actually self-mutilate their limbs, but rats just don't seem to have that issue. Also, they've just been kept so much longer as pets, so there's a lot more information on their care, especially on YouTube where there's very few good sugar glider YouTubers. There's quite a few good rat ones. Like sugar gliders, they do have a pretty complicated diet, but with them being kept so much longer as pets, there's a lot more diet plans to choose from. With sugar gliders, when you have about four or five approved diets, there's a lot more options available for rats. Also, in regards to just different medical conditions, there just seems to be a lot more knowledge since rats have been kept for so much longer. Rats also can be litter trained, whereas with sugar gliders, it's completely impossible because it's a natural instinct for them to want to spray and mark their territory. Rats also seem to have a lot more of the personalities that people expect from sugar gliders. Some sugar gliders are extremely bonded and personable, but other ones really aren't and don't care that much for human attention. Whereas with rats, it seems like you have a much better chance of getting a highly social bonded rat. Even though rats probably have the most similar care and personalities to sugar gliders, if you do want something that's slightly more exotic, then a short-tailed opossum could be for you. If you're like me and you love having a pet that not everyone else has, then I think short-tailed opossums are really great. They are marsupials just like sugar gliders, however, they aren't social. So if your parents said that you can only get one pet or you have a lease that only allows you to have one pet, a short-tailed opossum would be a great option. They also seem to need a little bit less space than sugar gliders because they can live alone, but the more you spoil them, obviously the better. They're going to be about the same price range as a sugar glider, depending on the individual breeder you find, but it's going to be a little bit cheaper since you only have to get one. Some people also say that they do smell less, and they do seem to have slightly easier diets than sugar gliders. However, since they are a little bit more uncommon in the pet trade, it's a little bit harder to find exactly what you should be feeding them. With them being marsupials and nocturnal, they do really well with being carried around in pouches the same way sugar gliders do. Some differences are their lifespan. I actually think they have a really ideal lifespan living four to six years, which I think is great if you're still living with your parents, but you don't want to have to deal with loss so early, but you also don't want a pet that's going to be with you until your mid 20s or 30s. Also, with them being newer to the pet trade, there aren't any color variations, so you can only get them in brown. And with them being a solitary species, many don't bond that closely with their owners. Some people have really good luck and they're able to have a really close bond, but a lot of short-tailed opossums just seem pretty unbothered by their humans and they don't seem to bond the same way gliders do. 
However, I think this can also be a really good thing if you're pretty busy and you don't have a bunch of time to give for an animal that's constantly wanting your attention. Overall, I think short-tailed opossums are great if you can only have one of an animal and you don't want one that's as high commitment in lifespan or in the amount of attention that they need as share gliders. They also do have that exotic look to them, so if you don't want something more common, I think these would be great. However, if you do like the exotic factor, but you don't actually want all the cons that come with having an exotic pet, I'd highly recommend hedgehogs. What often draws people to exotic pets is just their super unique appearance, and I think hedgehogs hit that right in the head because they look like something that you shouldn't be able to have in your home, but they surprisingly make really great pets. Hedgehogs are also solitary, which is great if you can only have one. And even though they have that exotic look to them, they've actually been kept in captivity for quite a while, so there's a lot of care information about them. They just don't seem to have super exotic needs like you would expect. They do really good on different kibble diets. You should do your own research about what kibble brand you want to use or whether you want to make a mix. But honestly, pretty high quality cat foods seem to work really well for them. They also do pretty well at room temperature. Some people do recommend supplemental lighting and they don't need an obnoxious cage size. Everyone has a different answer, but I think anything from two foot by two foot to two foot by three foot is a great size for them. They also are pretty available and they're not that expensive. You can find a hedgehog for as cheap as $100 to $200, not saying that you should necessarily buy it because with hedgehogs, it's super important that you're buying from a reputable breeder, but they are just so much more affordable, especially since you only have to buy one. They also have the same lifespan as short-tailed opossums, living four to six years. Some people say three to five, but I think it's a great number if you don't want the high commitment of a share glider. Again, like the short-tailed opossum, with them being solitary, they just don't bond that closely to their humans. Some people are able to have really tame and bonded hedgehogs with regular socializing, but it seems like the majority are pretty intolerant to a bunch of human handling. Overall, I think a hedgehog would be great for you if you want a super exotic looking pet, but one that's going to be affordable, not have an overly complicated diet, and have a pretty reasonable living space. Keep going on the exotic theme, I think crested geckos would be great to share gliders. I know it's kind of weird because they are reptiles, but I do think that they look pretty similar where they both look very exotic, but they're also very cute with their huge eyes. Their handling also does seem to kind of be like a shore glider in the fact that they can jump from different places, which I think is really cool. But I think the main benefits of having them over a shore glider are that they are reptiles, so they're just a lot lower maintenance in general. Especially if you opt for a bioactive setup, you don't have to be doing regular cage cleans. Their cage housing requirement is so much smaller than a sure glider, and they do completely okay on their own. Crested geckos also seem to come in every color under the rainbow. Not saying every color is super affordable, but I'm sure you're bound to find a crested gecko that you like that's also within your budget. They're also a great starter reptile in general, so if you've never been super into reptiles but you want to start, I think crested geckos would be great. They don't always need supplemental heating, especially if you have a pretty warm room. They also have really good diets that are pre-made for them, like from Pangea or Rapashi. Again, do your own research about what pre-made brands you want to use, but for the most part, geckos seem to thrive on these different fruit diets, and you can occasionally add insects. Again, do your own research about how often or how many insects you should be giving. With them being solitary, some people do argue that you can keep females together. You can't really have a bunch in the same cage. However, I think they are really fun like shore gliders because you can kind of collect them since their caging isn't really outrageous. You can have a lot of different cages next to each other and people are able to make really cool giant split terrariums for them. If you love doing different fancy cage setups, which is one thing I love about sure gliders, I think reptiles in general, but especially crested geckos would be really fun since they do really well in tropical setups. And I think it'd be really fun to try out all the different plants and different setups for them. They also are nocturnal and they have very long lifespans, actually longer than sure gliders. Again, the exact number is pretty debated, but 15 to 20 years seems to be a pretty common consensus. However, with them being solitary, they aren't going to love human interaction. A lot of them are actually very tolerant of it and are just really good handlers by nature, but it's not going to be like a sure glider who's going to seek you out and want to give you attention. And with that, we're on to our last alternative for sure gliders, which is actually mice. If you love the fact that sure gliders are highly social and you can have a bunch of them in a colony and have actually really pretty colorful colonies, I think female mice would be a great option. 
like sugar gliders, you can actually have a bunch of female mice living together. And they also do come in so many different fun colors the same way sugar gliders do. So you can have a super bright and colorful group of females and you can tell them all apart. Love watching sugar gliders play. I think female mice would be so fun because their cages are just super interactive. They're actually very intelligent and especially if you have a large group of females, there's always going to be someone doing something interesting. They're also nocturnal slash crepuscular depending on the individual mouse and just who you ask. So again, if you're more of a night owl, I think these would be really fun for you. However, if you want an animal that's going to bond with you super closely, then I'd actually recommend male mice. People have different opinions on whether you can keep males together, whether you can keep neutered males with females, or whether you should have them with female African soft furred rats. But basically, male mice are just super interactive, super cuddly, and bond super closely with their humans. Male mice seem to beg for human attention the same way sugar gliders do, which I think is really adorable. And they also seem to love being in pockets and different crevices the same way sugar gliders. Mice, again, are also so much more affordable and so much more accessible than sugar gliders. Their diet is a lot more simplified, again, just because they've been being kept for so long. And it's probably going to have a lot easier time finding a mouse keeping community than you are a sugar glider keeping community. Both male and female mice are also highly intelligent, so you can have really fun doing different cage setups for them. Though mice seem to not necessarily need a vertical tank, though they will utilize it, they seem to also do fine if you just have a bunch of horizontal space you want to give them. The main differences would again be their lifespan, with them being like rodents living one to two years, sometimes three. They don't seem to have as many health complications like rats do, so that could be an advantage. They also are quite a bit smaller and more delicate than sugar gliders, so if you're wanting an animal that you can kind of just cuddle and watch TV with, these might not be the best because they seem to be pretty active and pretty scurrying little guys, where sugar gliders are a little bit bigger, more substantial, and I definitely curl up and watch TV with these guys. So those were five pets that I think would be a good alternative for sugar gliders. To go over the list again, the first was rats, which are the closest. The next would be short-tailed opossums if you want something that's in the marsupial family. If you want something that just looks super exotic, then hedgehogs would be great. Again, if you love how adorable sugar gliders are and you love those big eyes, I think crested geckos would be great. And lastly, if you just love how smart they are and love watching them play, female mice would be great. Or if you want one that's going to bond with you super closely and beg for your attention, then male mice. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what alternatives you would recommend for rabbits. I think that would be a really fun video to make next. Thank you guys again. See you next time. Bye.